Uh, this lecture is on oil analysis. In fact, this is a continuation of the earlier class on contaminant analysis. As you know, uh, wear and debris analysis almost constitute 20 percent of the CBMs or condition based maintenance techniques which are adopted throughout the world. So, right now we will be talking about this oil analysis. So, as you know, just to recap, you know, tribology is the study of uh, friction, uh, lubrication, and wear, and it is when two of these machine components when they interact either they slide or rub and these surfaces are actually very rough if you see the surface roughness they are very rough and they have a uh, central line uh, average. So, what happens to reduce this kind of uh, friction we need to give a layer of lubricating oil. oil. Now, <clears throat> because of forces which are responsible for the contact, these surfaces could rub against each other, they may slide, they may roll okay, and this is how they two surfaces meet. So, to reduce friction we need to give lubricating oil. Now, during the course of the time operation of the machine what happens? These particles they will wear out particles will wear out and in the last class we had seen how these particles are contaminants because they are going to contaminate the oil which is there. So, these particles will wear out and get deposited in the lubricating oil. Now, because of this contamination of the oil, of the oil, this becomes an indicator of the machine's health indicator of the machines health condition. Now, <coughs> you will see that in every machine be it an IC engine, uh, be it a pump blower etcetera we need to have lubricating oil between the components particularly at the bearing locations, particularly at the uh, wherever the surfaces are contacting each other, they are sliding over the one over the other, we need to give oil. Apart from it, there is another uh, uh, um, scenario, one is this lubricating oil. another component which becomes this hydraulic oil. There are many operations particularly the you know, the earth moving equipment, earth moving equipment when you talk about big shovels, dumpers, excavators etcetera. They actually use a lot of hydraulic oil for uh, actuating the, um, the loading unloading mechanisms and so on. So, <clears throat> what happens to uh, consider or uh, to understand the health of this machine, we may periodically look into the condition of the hydraulic oil, condition of the lubricating oil. So, what happens initially these oils have some properties be it the physical properties in terms of their density viscosity, their uh, temperature stability or uh, the viscosity index, how the viscosity, uh, viscosity varies with temperature. These are some of the physical properties. On top of it, there are chemical properties in terms of their composition, in terms of their bonds which are there. Uh, we, we give some stabilizing um, elements to the oils you know, to be stable, so that the bonds do not break up and then they lose their properties. But in due course of time, because of the fact that because of the machines rubbing uh, against each other, 
where particles will bound to get uh, deposited, they have no place to go but the lubricating oil or the hydraulic oil. So, in process what happens? The physical and chemical properties of this lubricating oil or hydraulic oil do change with time. So, if we have some mechanism as to we collect this oil, do a, a test in a, a laboratory wherein we measure their physical properties or chemical properties and see how the how much they have changed or gone for the worse from the initial conditions of the virgin oil or the new oil or the brand new oil, we will get a clue as to there is something perhaps wrong with this machine. So, this is what is the most important preamble and then why we do oil analysis in uh, to find out the machine's health condition. So, with time what happens? The oil condition, the oil condition could be many like we have some physical properties and some chemical properties and we have maybe they will change maybe and or it could be other way also. So, between a tolerable band you know this is the tolerable band ok these two are the tolerable bands. So, if the properties deviate beyond this tolerable bands upper limit and lower limit we know time to change the oil time to change the oil time to change. I will just give you an example as to for example, uh, when we have periodic maintenance we actually in a regular interval change oil in the machine. Okay. Now, uh, this is good for an individual for example, a very good example I always give is you know when you have an automobile be it a two wheeler or a four wheeler, four wheeler you go as per the OEM manufacturer they say every 5000 kilometer you go for an oil and filter change or sometimes say or 3 months whichever is earlier if you if you go see the uh, car manual uh, service manual or the two wheeler uh, service manual this is what it normally says. Now, it may so happen that your oil condition was much within the tolerable bands I just talked about ok is uh, somewhere here and we are unnecessary changing the oil because you know your 3 months has come here in time or so you say now it is time to change my oil, but you see the oil is still in a good condition there was not ne no necessity to change the oil, but because we are uh, following uh, religiously the OEM uh, manufacturer uh, recommendations we are changing it. Now, imagine if in a uh, plant where we have maybe you know thousands of such locations where oil change is done and it so happened that the condition of the oil was within the tolerable bands, but then because we are changing the oil, oil may be good we are wasting good oil. So, wasting good oil if I do what is the no 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 this periodic maintenance and there have been reports and you know, people have uh, shown statistics or done surveys and found out that by not changing the oil uh, periodically as has been mentioned by the OEM, but changing it only when it is required because the properties have uh, gone 
beyond the bands and you know, somewhere we are here, here etcetera, then only we change the oil. So, oil change is to be done only when it is required, oil change is to be done only when it is required. Now, who tells us that it is time for the oil to change and this is where our oil analysis comes to the help. And uh, going back to the earlier example, there have been lot of cost savings when we do uh, <coughs> oil change as per the recommendation or as per the found foundings of the oil analysis. Okay? Otherwise, we need not change the oil and there have been lot of considerable uh, uh, lot of saving uh, in uh, finance uh, when you uh, when you do an oil change only when it is required. Okay. Particularly in uh, many plants you know many of these automation plants where we use a lot of hydraulic oils you know if you if you talk about an uh, automatic uh, uh, currency note uh, printing uh, um, shop you know, you know we, we have uh, uh, currency note uh, uh, printing plant very close to Kharagpur and uh, where they use lot of hydraulic oils for operating of the uh, machines wherein the currency sheets are printed you know the way they are measured counted then the way they are packed in bundles these are all hydraulic operations. So, and we have done surveys wherein we found out that it is cheaper and much economic if you change the oil only when it is required in this case being the hydraulic oil and not regular regularly religiously every you know, 3 months or 4 months change the oil. Okay. So, in a plant in the long run actually oil analysis serves you two purpose you know one is it tells you that what is the present condition of the oil and next is you can know whether it is time for me to change the oil or not change the oil. So, just going back to uh, the overall tribological analysis for condition uh, machine condition monitoring, we have what is known as the contaminant analysis okay, and which we discussed yesterday that is a spectroscopy where the particle size are less than uh, 2 microns. Then we have the wear debris analysis or ferrography wherein the particles so go from. As I was telling, this oil analysis is to be done only when oil change is <coughs> to be done only when it is required. Now, question is who decides uh, what is required? It actually, when it is required, uh, this is actually done by oil analysis. By oil analysis. Now, um, uh, I'll just give an example. Uh, we have a currency note, you know, the rupee currency note, which is printed. We have a currency note um, printing uh, plant very close to Kharagpur. Actually, there in uh, the after the printing press the sheets of paper because you know counting is very very important when you are doing a currency note uh, printing. The counting and the process of packing and bundling etcetera are all done through hydraulic actuated uh, acti uh, actuators hydraulically uh, activated actuators and there are a lot of hydraulic oil flowing in the plant and uh, in the circuits uh, different uh, actuation uh, mechanisms or the counting mechanisms. And it was reported that earlier when very religiously they were doing uh, this hydraulic oil uh, um, change in a periodic manner, uh, they were incurring a lot of cost rather when they did the hydraulic oil analysis and only changed whenever the oil analysis recommended or indicated that the oil quality has deteriorated and now it is time to change the hydraulic oil. They followed this practice 
and then there has been considerable savings in uh, the plant because of implementing oil analysis in the, uh, the in their hydraulic, hydraulic oil requirement and same of course you can do with the engine lubricating oils particularly in the in, in such a plant actually um, mostly it is hydraulic oil but the dg set the diesel generator sets which are required for uh, backup power uh, are actually there the lubricating oil are actually analyzed okay so now nec next question is in this oil analysis uh, let us see what are the tribological analysis for machine condition monitoring one is this contaminant analysis which i talked about uh, in the last class and uh, where the contaminants can actually be categorized into three categories the spectroscopy is the contaminant size are less than 2 microns wherein actually in spectroscopy just to recap actually in spectroscopy because the particles are of such a small size we cannot see them through unless we have very very high magnification um, like in a scanning electron microscope or um, otherwise in you know, a spectroscopy is used actually to find out the chemical constituents of the wear particles in terms of the chemical elements it could be how much percentage of iron is there how much percentage of aluminum is there how much of um, copper zinc etc is there next comes actually this wear debris analysis wherein the samples are of the size from you know, maybe 10 microns to you know as we, uh, as high as maybe 50 microns and when the particle sizes become large actually the uh, the contaminant particle count actually becomes a good indicator about the wearing uh, mechanism and this particle count is actually given in how many parts per million in a given milliliter of that oil okay but uh, in this class we are focusing on oil analysis so right in the beginning i told you because this oil has got contaminant and it is going to, and because it has been subjected to a lot of temperatures you know temperature fluctuations could happen because of a lot of oil because once when two members are mating against each other there will be a lot of heat generation and you know if you shut off the machine shut down the machine there will be a lot of temperature cycling so because of load temperature cycling okay etc the oil are going to lose its property all properties change change and then of course the contaminant themselves properties change okay so we need to do the oil analysis i will um, briefly uh, recap you know, uh, regarding the contaminant analysis because this contaminant and oil analysis actually go together side by side and uh, to begin with just to give you an uh, overview why this uh, oil properties change you know in a typical oil other than the virgin oil we give lot of additive agents to the oil for example so in this table if you will see the first column is the oil additive then the second column is the purpose why this oil additive has been given to the oil and certain remarks so to have an antioxidation to slow down the formation of oil oxidation which produces lacquers actually if the oils um, oxide they will become very gummy type you know things okay and they could uh, unnecessarily increase the friction etc certain anti wear additives are there so that the wear is reduced and uh, actually a thin uh, film is produced and obviously into some of these oils we need to give uh, corrosion inhib inhibitors which basically is an alkali which we mixed so that it counters the development of uh, acids okay and thus high alkalinity is given to the oil demulsifier to separate the water from oil usually in the plants the lot of problem comes because these oils get um, uh, ingested with water okay and this water forms a layer and sometimes you, know, you must have seen even in uh, in oil once this water is mixed there is a lot of problem 
okay, and it, it has a lot of uh, detrimental effect on the properties. Extreme pressure, pressure agent improve the surface of metal under pressure. A chemical reaction is caused by this additive. Viscosity index improver it reduces the change in viscosity of the temperature and actually the long chain polymers which open up with temperature. Basically, viscosity index, uh, as I was telling you, the pro the oil are subject to a lot of temperature cycling, and you know viscosity is a function of temperature. Okay, but then this viscosity index improvers are given. So viscosity index is actually the function of how the viscosity changes with temperature. We would not like uh, oil to drastically change the viscosity with temperature, but you know you must have noticed. In just in a, as an example, in engine oil, particularly not in our countries, but in, in the, in the uh, countries in the northern or the southern hemisphere, close to the poles, actually there is a lot of temperature variations. So viscosity changes with temperature. So, they have a summer time engine oil and a winter time engine oil, okay. because and of course, you know, if you go to the SAE grades, you know, the SAE grades for the engine oil. You can see how the temperature uh, variation of viscosity is given. Okay. So, uh, just to recap, you know, when you do the spectroscopic methods, and actually the when you do the spectroscopic methods, actually how are these contaminants? We cannot collect contaminants of two micron size just by picking them up. So, actually they they are as an suspension in the oil and this is a container. So, this suspension are nothing but the contaminants or the debris. But in this class, we are focusing, as I was telling you, on this oil whose property has changed. Okay. And so, of course, you can take this same container, okay, it, uh, if you have this oil which has been collected from a machine, actually, they are actually closed with a cap. Okay. There is a reason why I have mentioned this closed cap, because when I am talking about sizes of 2 micron or less, even the dirt particles in air, in the ambient air can contaminate the oil sample. So, it is not very easy that just you open the engine and you know get a depth stick and or a get a get a um, container and uh, full of oil. No, we there is a procedure detailed procedure of how this oil is to be uh, collected. So, that our ambient air does not contaminate does not contaminate the sample. Other than no, we will not know whether it this particles which are there in the oil is it because of the machine or because of the environment. Okay to avoid such uh, false negative uh, tests, we have to uh, do this. Okay. Of course, you know ferrography uh, are in uh, different uh, formats, you know direct reading or the analytical ferrography from the ferrogram etcetera. And the ferrographic wire particles which are there in the oil, they have different sizes. For example, the normal rubbing wear the debris look like flat platelets of the size 5 to 10 microns in size. Cutting wares are actually thin to thick curl strips 
spherical particles of smaller ball sizes 15 to 20 microns in size. If there is a severe sliding wear, the particles will be long and flat and larger than 30 microns. If there are bearing wear particles, there will be laminar particles, edge plates and holes. In gear particle, gear wear particles are usually rough and irregular surface. Just to give you a brief idea regarding how the particles look like. But the <coughs> wear debris composition helps us the quality and composition of wear metals allows us to set alarm levels. Now, this maybe comes from experience. Now, you know your parent material has so much of iron and so much of uh, copper, so much of zinc, etcetera. You can set your standards. Usually, these standards are given in the uh, international standards about maybe you know if you if you have maybe usually it is in a, if it is more than 15 ppm in a particular uh, 10 ml or whatever parts per million are available um, of iron or silicon or sulfur etcetera you need to be these are the alarm levels. Of course, this, uh, this, uh, this is very relatively speaking okay, this levels, but then you can set up your standards for you know for all the blowers in your plant, all the gear boxes in your plant. all the pumps in the plant, okay, all the engines in the plant, you can set up the standard for what is the level of level of tolerance of contaminants suspended in the oil okay you can uh, this yourself you can set it up okay and of course coming back to this wear debris compositions uh, another very important aspect is this knowledge of metallurgical composition is helpful in localizing source of wear metal production because once i am getting this uh, contaminants or wear metal in the uh, suspended oil i need to be i need to know where from this material came. So, the parent metallurgical composition of these uh, elements is very very important for us. And uh, this uh, what are the some strategies which we follow for the wear contaminant analysis. One is we have to catch the faults early okay, because low cost and planned and manageable remedy. Okay, they have to be planned, and we need to know the solution because many a times, what happens when you are? Uh, I'll just give an example: oil. You have collected oil. Okay, which has a particular concentration. Okay. and you are doing the trending of the uh, part uh, of the concentration with time okay. you are doing this but suddenly what happens in the plant in the machine in the meantime you have added new good quality good oil or virgin oil. So, if I add this, this concentration is going to go less. So, we have to be careful that during my trending plot there is this uh, when I collect the next sample after this time that if the oil uh, machine has been uh, upgraded because you know we, we do not care regard uh, uh, from an operational point of view if they say that the machine has to be filled with so much of oil level from an operations point of view we have to ensure that the oil is full in the tank okay but it has so happened that when you collected the oil the oil actually was at this level okay so you will get a richer concentration okay of the contaminants 
and then now if you next dilute it with good oil this concentration is going to reduce. So, we have to be careful about this kind of uh, planning. So, uh, so we, to, we should know what is the procedure to catch this uh, defects so called in the oil. Of course, uh, identify precise source of fault this requires different technology and analytical method like I was telling you like the spectroscopy methods or the uh, ferrograms etcetera they are very cost uh, intensive operations. So, in situ oil or contaminant analysis is not possible because of many reasons. They are bulky, they require a very clean environment to do these operations, they are very costly and so on. So, uh, we in, in fact as opposed to you know just if you compare as opposed to maybe vibration monitoring. One of the reasons why vibration monitoring is very popular I would say is a couple of things. One is in situ measurements are possible and they are very very cheap and because of the signal processing techniques right away by having a signal analyzer we can right away tell the cause can be cause can be immediately immediately known. Okay. So, uh, and in fact that is the reason why this vibration monitoring is popular, but the oil analysis actually complements complements the other vibration monitoring, because if you have got some clue or some cause known from vibration monitoring you can confirm confirmation confirmation can be done by an oil analysis or an wear debris analysis. In fact, in many plants when they do uh, machinery troubleshooting machinery troubleshooting they adopt both the techniques ok. They do an in situ vibration monitoring and analysis and then they collect the oil sample, they send it to a lab, do the analysis and the labs will also say suppose uh, for example, uh, for an example I will tell you that the vibration monitoring says that you are you know, in, 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 a, in a let me give you another example. Say for example, I have a sh shaft. which is supported on in one case the general bearings, one case is an anti friction bearing. This is an anti friction bearing. and actually there is a casing and so on. And this is filled with some oil this could be carrying couple of uh, maybe some 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 disc rotor just as an example ok. Now, it may so happen that by having vibration mounting if I if I put a transducer here and it says that I am getting a 0.45 x peak ok. 
other than I am getting a predominant 0.45 x peak in this uh, spectrum. Okay, and this corresponds to 0.45 x frequency. I am getting some amplitude. Okay, uh, this is the virus and signature. Uh, looking at this, knowing that there is a general bearing, we may think that this is an oil well which is occurring because of 0.45 x. Usually, it is 0.45 uh, 4.42, but then we are getting around 0.45 x. So, it we may lead to a conclusion that there is a strong case of a journal bearing defect okay and how this is uh, this is complemented through oil analysis is now if we collect the oil from the same machine and and say that it has uh, and then do a uh, analysis of the contaminants collect oil collect oil and do the analysis of the contaminants you will see that there is a rich rich presence of of zinc this means that the journal bearing has zinc has worn out so oil analysis is also now confirming your earlier observation that there is a defect in the journal bearing because i have got a 0.545x uh, peak and now uh, because of this oil analysis i am seeing a rich amount of zinc and this means that there is a defect in the uh, general bearing and this is how it helps us okay so the wear particle analysis tactics is in improving the quality trainability and design of the density of the data particularly we are very careful about the errors in the sampling process and analysis like the example i was telling you two examples one is you are uh, collecting the samples in an environment where the environment itself has a lot of suspended uh, dirt particles particularly the case of a coal mine where in the there is a lot of coal dust so and uh, these dirts could be of size of more than 5 microns we should not be collecting samples during uh, uh, environmental con uh, contaminants during sampling sampling from dead zones like dead zones where uh, all the sediments uh, come and get deposited normalization of data because uh, dilution because of new oil addition reduced data noise poorly filtered oil so these are the techniques which we have to take care of and we do about the wear debris compositions i will be not uh, dwelling much on this and rather i will go to the uh, fluid analysis part so the forms of metal wear present metal only means mechanical wear metal oxides means oxidation corrosion dissolved or metallic components could be because of chemical corrosion so an effective oil analysis program needs to have these features in the mind we obviously cannot start an oil analysis schedule uh, after the machine has uh, gone bad so we have to establish the objectives and oil analysis schedule in a regular manner handle the oil sample correctly because these samples from so for example in a plant i have 1000 different locations wherein i have to sample the oil um, samples so every collectant point has to be named numbered date when it was collected this has to be done okay and then proper communication with the analysis lab because you are somewhere your plant is somewhere and your lab is maybe you know thousands of kilometers away from your uh, plant so we need to communicate with this analysis lab as to where from this oil have been collected how they have been collected what are the different analysis time uh, analysis tests which needs to be done and of course put the right oil in the right machine you know extend oil uh, drain intervals when needed identify the quantity of contaminants identify the origin of contaminants 
provide feedback to the laboratory, evaluate the cost effectiveness. Because the same oil uh, serves both the purpose, both one purpose of doing the oil analysis, the next purpose of doing also, also the contaminant analysis. Now, what are the lubricating oil analysis uh, properties? Basically, the lubricating oil is analyzed for these parameters one is the viscosity, the contamination, the fuel dilation, the solids contain, the fuel suit, oxidation, nitrogen. So, there are actually many standards which are available. So, we need to specify either to the lab tell, uh, by telling them the standard numbers or uh, tell them the procedure which they uh, follow should be an international standard. So, in this uh, uh, few slides, I am going to tell you about some of the standards which are internationally followed for doing such tests and uh, when you in your plant give the oil sample to another test agency or an analysis laboratory, we you need to specify the standards. For example, if you need to do the atomic emission spectroscopy, these are the NTSL 01, NTSL 02, FTIR spectroscopy, you need to specify these standards. So, the purpose of giving these uh, standards means that you need to be aware of the standards. Of course, you now these standards are available from the sources and then you can study them. Particularly, when we do the physical property test, the kinematic viscosity at 40 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius needs to be calculated or measured as for this ASTM standard viscosity index, uh, the specific gravity, the acid number, base number, oxidation stability. So, these uh, numbers given here are actually the ASTM standards. So, uh, the purpose of letting you know uh, in this class is not to discuss about how the standard is or what the standard is, just to make you aware that such standards do exist. So, all you have to do is collect the oil sample and send it to a particular lab and specify a standard by which they need to do these tests. Similarly, very important is this contamination test in the oil, the gross water content uh, by crackle test. Crackle test is actually you know, once you heat that oil sample, you will hear a lot of crackling noise and that is why the name crackle test came. And then we have moisture absorption by the Carl Fisher method, chlorine content of lubricating oil. Okay. And these are some of the tests you know which you may be aware of in your uh, chemical uh, chemistry lab and, or in your chemical analysis lab. And then of course, there are certain standards as to count as per the SAE standard or the NEPA standard basically, basically through a laser light. You will see a laser light being uh, incident on this uh, suspended oil particle and once this uh, laser light gets reflected, the intensity of reflection gives you a clue as to the measure of the amount of contaminant in that oil and that is how either uh, you have a particle count or by having sieves or filters of different uh, diameter, you can also do the pore blockage particle counts. And then and there are a few more uh, wear debris and contaminant analysis by direct read, read ferrography, millipore patch test, so these are all NTSL standards which are available. Now, a very important fact uh, which we need to consider is how do I collect the oil. Okay? It is just not that you know, I open the drain plug and collect all the oil. In fact, let me tell you the drain plug in an engine is not the place to collect oil, but for convenience many do that I know. Okay, suppose this is something I am not going to describe about the internals, but okay, and this is the drain plug. And imagine if this uh, machine was not operating and then the oil was not in motion, what would happen? All the heavy sediments would come to the bottom of the tank. heavy sediments. Okay. Now, if I collect the oil just by opening the drain plug and then I will get a very 
rich heavy sample okay of contaminants and that is not the right way to collect oil this is definitely not a method okay and obviously when uh, the safety risk is very important if I, if i if i tap a hole okay because the oil could be under high pressure and high temperature so they may just squirt out and and uh, create create harm harmful to the operator the operator or the technician so safety risk has to be considered because there will be hot fluid pressurized okay so this one has to be very careful that it is just not very simple that you know i just uh, and you should you should in fact never uh, open a machine anything you know when because there are a lot of dynamics occurring in shafts rotating at very very high speeds uh, a lot of uh, fluid under pressure uh, they can damage and criticality of equip equipment for example uh, like i said how frequently we need to consider this oil sample is it every you now for example if you talk of an aircraft engine do you mean to say after you know every every you know two years you are going to just open the or uh, collect the oil samples no so depending on the criticality of the equipment we need to increase the frequency of uh, the oil sampling environmental conditions uh, whether it's a very dirty environment whether it's a very clean environment these also factors go into the consideration of oil sampling okay so the sampling objective is that produce a sample that is representative of the material the system is producing and the contaminant that has entered the system ensure a proper timing for sampling prevent contamination of the sample during sampling by now you get an idea like i told you about the coal mine where there are a lot of hydraulic operating you know, shovels drag lines excavators you know, in such an environment you have to be very very careful as to how to collect this oil samples okay uh this is a figure from an uh, caterpillar uh, website okay some of these figures uh, which are actually from the you can go to some of this website actually these figures are from that site okay so these are some of the if you have an engine uh, there is a lube oil and uh, these are the filters so some these are the good locations to collect the oil okay and these are definitely not the the cross ones or the bad points okay actually the sampling bottles some look something like this and the bottles themselves have to be a very clean and then their iso standards for cleanliness of the sampling bottle because the bottles themselves if you're talking about a bottle the bottle itself should not have contaminants it should be no contaminants but you no know, no is difficult to define so there are iso standards as to say what is what and uh, and how you collect it ideally through a vacuum pump or a valve drain valve etc this is how they are collected so this iso 3722 cleanliness of sampling method tells that it is clean when they are uh, there are less than 100 particles greater than 10 microns per milliliter okay super clean less than 10 particles greater than 10 microns per milliliter ultra clean glass bottles washed and dried in clean environment so such uh, cleanliness of sampling method is very very important because i cannot have an 
dirty bottle wherein there are contaminants. In fact, sometimes when this tubings are required in this vacuum pump, this tubings once you have collected oil from one place, so like a machine, you have collected oil. In the next, uh, when you go to the next machine, you should discard the tubing, and you should put a fresh tubing. Otherwise, the contaminants from the earlier machine are going to get get deposited in the walls of the tubing, and uh, it is going to contaminate the second reading. So, contamination has to be avoided at any cost, and that is why this cleanliness is essential uh, to be maintained through this ISO 3722 standards. Now, uh, before I uh, conclude uh, this class, I will be telling you some of the effects the contaminants or the oil do to damage bearings. And uh, these are uh, available in the uh, handbooks, uh, particularly the tribology handbooks. Okay. So, this is just a figure as to the general view of corrosion damage due to water contamination during storage, particularly when you know when you uh, when you go the uh, ships, the naval ships. The propeller shafts are supported by padded journal bearings okay. and you know if you if you go to the hull of the ship wherein and this is the machine and actually they are when when they go to the high seas okay uh, they store these bearing pads you know on 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 this hull okay and whenever extra bearing pads are required they just remove it and keep it and during storage for a long time you know because of the moist environment there is a lot of water contamination during storage and you can see if it goes neglected there will be this corrosion marks which are there on the bearing Severe cavitation damage of an alternative bearing attributed to chronic water contamination. You see the cavitation damage in an alternative uh, bearing. Okay. Scoring and impact damage from severe debris entrained in the oil, uh, because if there was an wear particle, it was there in the oil, it would score and then damage. It is just like this, you know, bad. Uh, patches on the road okay and if this goes undetected and uncared for these are going to become bigger and bigger and eventually there will be a huge failure of the bearing okay next is you know there is a lot of acid phase of a copper bearing lead bearing. lead is very susceptible to acid attack you know i was talking about this acids which are there and they lead to corrosion and so that's why we need to give in this oil a lot of uh, anti corrosion uh, additives okay basically an alkali treatment acid attack of bearing material the bearing material has been completely dissolved showing the overlay of the nickel interlayer underlay and steel black making okay acid attack is very very dangerous of course this is because of a fatigue loading an actual fatigue damage the small end bush and of course, this you can see the overload balls showing plastic deformation, fatigue, and scoring. Fatigue damage uh, due to a roller pin. Severe actual shaft is a misalignment, overloading one edge of the bearing. You can see it, overloading at one edge of the bearing. Okay. Electrical discharge damage to an alternator bearing estimated at about 50 millivolt per level. Okay. Lot of discharge occurs you now, which I was describing in the last class, particularly when this uh, sparks occur. 
okay so in conclusion uh, and of course again a scoring and pitting from electrical discharge on an operating high speed alternator generalized bearing wear due to insufficient oil film thickness probably the result of oil dilution with a distillate fuel so in uh, conclusion in this class uh, we discussed about uh, how oil analysis is important and how oil analysis or contaminant analysis can complement whatever we have done through vibration monitoring and in particular what are the techniques of uh, oil sampling or what are the precautions we need to take uh, regarding oil sampling and how important the convenience uh, the cleanliness of the sampling bottle is uh, what is the importance of the cleanliness of the sampling bottle and what happens if to the bearings if this oil have contaminants and how they can damage the bearings so in a nutshell uh, this oil and uh, contaminant analysis actually form 20% of the cases of cbm throughout the world and they actually help complement the vibration mounting techniques okay thank you